Chapter 6 Dhyana Yoga The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, One who is unattached to the fruits of his work and who works as he is obligated is in the renounced order of life, and he is the true mystic, not he who lights no fire and performs no duty. What is called renunciation you should know to be the same as yoga, or linking oneself with the Supreme, O son of Pandu. For one can never become a yogi unless he renounces the desire for sense gratification. For one who is a neophyte in the eightfold yoga system, work is said to be the means. And for one who is already elevated in yoga, cessation of all material activities is said to be the means. A person is said to be elevated in yoga when, having renounced all material desires, he neither acts for sense gratification nor engages in fruitive activities. One must deliver himself with the help of his mind and not degrade himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. For him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends, but for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. For one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, for he has attained tranquility. To such a man, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor are all the same. A person is said to be established in self-realization and is called a yogi or mystic when he is fully satisfied by virtue of acquired knowledge and realization. Such a person is situated in transcendence and is self-controlled. He sees everything, whether it be pebbles, stones, or gold, as the same. A person is considered still further advanced when he regards honest well-wishers, affectionate benefactors, the neutral, mediators, the envious, friends and enemies, the pious and the sinners, all with an equal mind. A transcendentalist should always engage his body, mind, and self in relationship with the Supreme. He should live alone in a secluded place and should always carefully control his mind. He should be free from desires and feelings of possessiveness. To practice yoga, one should go to a secluded place and should lay kusha grass on the ground and then cover it with a deerskin and a soft cloth. The seat should be neither too high nor too low and should be situated in a sacred place. The yogi should then sit on it very firmly and practice yoga to purify the heart by controlling his mind, senses, and activities and fixing the mind on one point. One should hold one's body, neck, and head erect in a straight line and stare steadily at the tip of the nose. Thus, with an unagitated, subdued mind, devoid of fear, completely free from sex life, one should meditate upon me within the heart and make me the ultimate goal of life. Thus practicing constant control of the body, mind and activities, the mystic transcendentalist, his mind regulated, attains to the kingdom of God or the abode of Krishna by cessation of material existence. There is no possibility of one's becoming a yogi, O Arjuna, if one eats too much or eats too little, sleeps too much or does not sleep enough. He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. When the yogi by practice of yoga disciplines his mental activities and becomes situated in transcendence, devoid of all material desires, he is said to be well established in yoga. As a lamp in a windless place does not waver, so the transcendentalist, whose mind is controlled, remains always steady in his meditation on the transcendent self. In the stage of perfection called trance, or samadhi, one's mind is completely restrained from material mental activities by practice of yoga. This perfection is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness, realized through transcendental senses. Established thus, one never departs from the truth and upon gaining this, he thinks there is no greater gain. Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken, even in the midst of greatest difficulty. This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact.
one should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with determination and faith and not be deviated from the path. One should abandon without exception all material desires born of mental speculation and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind. Gradually, step by step, one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence sustained by full conviction and thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else. From wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. The yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest perfection of transcendental happiness. He is beyond the mode of passion. He realizes his qualitative identity with the Supreme and thus he is freed from all reactions to past deeds. Thus the self-controlled yogi, constantly engaged in yoga practice, becomes free from all material contamination and achieves the highest stage of perfect happiness in transcendental loving service to the Lord. A true yogi observes me in all beings and also sees every being in me. Indeed, the self-realized person sees me, the same Supreme Lord, everywhere. For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. Such a yogi who engages in the worshipful service of the Supersoul, knowing that I and the Supersoul are one, remains always in me in all circumstances. He is a perfect yogi who by comparison to his own self sees the true equality of all beings in both their happiness and their distress, O Arjuna. Arjuna said, O Madhusudana, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable to me, for the mind is restless and unsteady. For the mind is restless, turbulent, obstinate, and very strong, O Krishna, and to subdue it, I think, is more difficult than controlling the wind. Lord Sri Krishna said, O mighty armed son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment. For one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is difficult work, but he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success. That is my opinion. Arjuna said, O Krishna, what is the destination of the unsuccessful transcendentalist? who in the beginning takes to the process of self-realization with faith, but who later desists due to worldly-mindedness and thus does not attain perfection in mysticism. O oh, mighty armed Krishna, does not such a man who is bewildered from the path of transcendence fall away from both spiritual and material success and perish like a riven cloud with no position in any sphere? This is my doubt, O Krishna, and I ask you to dispel it completely but for you, no one is to be found who can destroy this doubt. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Son of Pritha, a transcendentalist engaged in auspicious activities does not meet with destruction either in this world or in the spiritual world. One who does good, my friend, is never overcome by evil. The unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy, or, if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. On taking such a birth, he revives the divine consciousness of his previous life, and he again tries to make further progress in order to achieve complete success, O son of Kuru. By virtue of the divine consciousness of his previous life, he automatically becomes attracted to the yogic principles, even without seeking them. Such an inquisitive transcendentalist stands always above the ritualistic principles of the scriptures. And when the yogi engages himself with sincere endeavor in making further progress, being washed of all contaminations, then ultimately achieving perfection after many, many births of practice, he attains the supreme goal. A yogi is greater than the ascetic, greater than the empiricist, and greater than the fruitive worker. Therefore, O Arjun, in all circumstances, be a yogi. And of all yogis, the one with great faith 
who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion.